Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates and the best stocks to buy. So without further ado, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into today's video. Recently, the NASDAQ has set a new closing record, and the S&P 500 as well as the Dow Jones are also increasing in their respected prices. In general, the U.S. stock market rose today, and it was being led by none other than the NASDAQ. I am excited to see that the NASDAQ has posted another record high to where their last record was set only two years ago. So over the last two years, investors have been getting a lot of value from this particular index. But I also don't want to leave out the S&P 500 and the Dow, which climbed by 0.52% and 0.12% respectively. I also want to point out that out of the 11 sectors in the S&P 500, 9 out of the 11 ended in the green, which is great news for investors. Now you might wonder what is causing this enthusiasm and momentum in the general stock market. Well, I'll tell you. According to the Seeking Alpha article, before the start of the regular trading day, the US Bureau of Economic Analysis published the Personal Income and Outlays Report for January. And this report contains the Core Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, also known as the PCE, which is the Federal Reserve's preferred inflation gauge. For context, if the Federal Reserve believes that inflation is still high, then they are not going to cut interest rates. However, if the metrics come in as expected or below, then they will start to cut interest rates, which will inflate the general stock market. So that's why investors are paying attention to these reports. And according to the Core Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, also known as the PCE, it rose by around 0.4% month over month. And that comes in spot on with estimates which predicted that it would come in at 0.4%. Therefore, investors were excited about this because it gives the Federal Reserve some wiggle room and the opportunity to potentially lower interest rates later in the year. To quote straight from the article, it says, quote, Today's PCE data came in exactly as expected, which lowered the fears of reignition of inflation. As a result, rate-sensitive segments like real estate and technology did well. This news was one of the reasons why the NASDAQ in particular, among the other indexes, rose in their general price because they are mainly made up of technology and information technology companies. So this news invigorated investors to further invest into technology stocks, and that's exactly what we are seeing right now. Therefore, it's a great time to be an investor, and it's a great time to invest into both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. For me personally, I like to invest into ticker symbol VOO for the S&P 500, and then for the NASDAQ, I like to invest into QQQM. Those are going to be my favorite ETFs to actually get exposure to these indexes, so I would highly recommend that investors check those ticker symbols out and tell me what you think about them down below, because I personally hold them in my portfolio. Next up, let's talk about one of my favorite companies named United Health and why they recently dipped in their share price. The reason why this massive insurance company is dropping in their share price recently is due to antitrust regulators who are investigating the company. So if these regulators find that United Health has violated antitrust laws, this is going to be catastrophic for this company. However, I am actually buying the dip on this company because they are one of my favorite stocks to buy. So I would highly recommend you looking into United Health as well and tell me what you think down below in the comments. But that's not all we have today. For instance, our next quick story would involve Bumble, which is a dating app. Bumble, ticker symbol BMPL, plans to lay off 30% of their staff, which would equate to around 350 employees. To make matters worse, the company also reported quarter four earnings, which disappointed investors. However, they believe that this is because Generation Z considers dating apps to be a turnoff. Now, the good news is that the CEO of this company is trying to cut costs wherever they can, and apparently these cuts would save the company around $55 million. But with that being said, if I had to invest into a company which operates a dating platform, I would not bet on Bumble, and instead I would bet on Match, ticker symbol MTCH. Match is actually the parent company which owns the majority of popular dating apps including Tinder and Hinge. However, it seems that all of these platforms lately have not been performing well, and it's not just Bumble. This is why Tinder is trying to shake off their hookup reputation, while Hinge and other apps are investing into in-person meetups. Therefore, Bumble is not the only one experiencing these problems, and instead it's a market problem. But overall, if I had to invest into either Bumble or Match, I clearly would invest into Match Group. Moving on to our next story, we 
actually have an update from last video, and that would be in regards to Wendy's, ticker symbol W-E-N, which is a fast food chain. In the last video, we talked about how Wendy's would implement dynamic pricing, which means that the prices of the items on their menu will fluctuate throughout the day based upon supply and demand. As an example, that means at around lunchtime or dinner time, the prices would be higher than other times throughout the day. However, Wendy's recently clarified that they are not planning on implementing surging prices after many people who like Wendy's said that this was a very bad idea. Now Wendy's is trying to back away from this idea, which I think is going to be a very smart move, but I would love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. In other quick news updates, let's talk about Starbucks, ticker symbol SBUX, which owns a very successful coffee chain. Starbucks has been fighting with a union for a while, and recently, after two and a half years, it seems that they are going to give raises to 10,000 of their union workers, and they are also adding tip prompts for card transactions. Therefore, this is great news for people who work for Starbucks, but from an investor standpoint, this will impact their bottom line. So I'm interested to see how this impacts their future earnings reports. But overall, I would say that this is mixed news and it's not necessarily bad news, but it's also not very good news. So we're just gonna have to see what the future holds for this company. Next up, I wanna reiterate our story on First Solar, which we talked about yesterday. And if you didn't know, First Solar is the largest US panel maker in the United States. Recently, they topped quarter four estimates with their profit increasing by 30%. Therefore, I do think investors should check out ticker symbol FSLR and tell me your thoughts about this company down below. Now let's do some deeper dives into AI stocks, starting off with Intel. The reason why Intel is in the news today, ticker symbol INTC, is because of their newly separated programmable chip unit, which could enhance artificial intelligence, and this will also allow them to ride the hype wave that is behind artificial intelligence. According to the article, it says that programmable chips are always at the forefront of that innovation cycle, and that's our job to stay at the forefront. And they are quoting here from the CEO. This is one of the reasons why Intel shares rose by 1.8% today, while competitors of Intel like AMD and Nvidia rose by 6.5% and 1.8% respectively. But we're going to talk more about AMD and Nvidia a little later in this video. Right now, let's focus on Intel. Intel recently said that the future of their programmable chip unit would be known as Altera, and Intel is likely going to spin off Altera over the next few years, just like it did with Mobileye, ticker symbol MBLY, which happened back in 2022. Next up, let's talk about Fisker, which is an electric vehicle startup company, and they have really been going through it lately. Fisker reported weaker than expected fourth quarter sales, and they also said that they have going concerns, which really scared investors. This is why the share price of Fisker is plummeting during after-hours trading. Let's start off talking about the their fourth quarter sales. The company brought in around $200 million, but Wall Street was expecting this company to bring in around $330 million, so clearly they missed that estimate. But the news gets a little worse, considering that the company produced around 4,789 vehicles in the fourth quarter, and they only delivered 3,818 of these vehicles. This leads investors to believe that the supply is outpacing the demand for this company, which is not a good sign. Things get even worse when we pan out to see the full year, because in the full year, Fisker and its production partner made 10,193 Fisker Oceans. However, they only delivered 4,929 of those vehicles. Lastly, you should know that Fisker has around $400 million on their books right now, which could be looked at as good news. But there is a big problem here because Fisker also projects that their key expenses for the next year is going to be around $330 to $390 million this year. Therefore, the company is going to have to raise more cash or completely go out of business, and only time will tell. This is one of the reasons why Fisker stock was down around 33% during after-hours trading to where now they only trade at $0.48 cents per share. But there is one piece of good news here. According to the company, they are, quote, in negotiations with a large automaker for a potential transaction which could include an investment in Fisker, a joint development of one or more vehicle platforms, and North American manufacturing. And honestly, this could be good news for the company, considering what automaker they are currently in negotiations with. For me personally, I do not own this company, because I believe there are far better electric vehicle companies on the market right now, but I would love to hear your thoughts down below about Fisker. Now let's talk about some technology stocks, starting off with Snowflake, which I do personally hold in my portfolio. Recently, investors have been talking about Snowflake, ticker symbol SNOW, ticker name 
Mammoth Snow, which currently trades at around $188 per share. However, you should also be aware that their share price is plummeting right now, which I am taking advantage of. But first, let's talk about why their share price is plummeting. The reason why their shares are decreasing right now is because of unexpected deceleration in Snowflake's revenue growth, and this is creating a challenging environment for investors. However, investors need to be aware that Snowflake's near-term prospects actually look pretty positive because they have strong bookings and a very scalable data management platform. If you didn't know, Snowflake is a data warehouse company and I believe the future of this company is extremely bright. However, there is a problem here considering that they are overvalued right now. According to the stock's current valuation, they are currently trading at 50 times their forward free cash flow. Therefore, as soon as investors saw that their current growth rates and growth prospects do not meet their forward metrics or accounting ratios, that's why investors decided to liquidate this company and that's why we are seeing their share price fall. In a nutshell, this unforeseen slowdown in revenue growth scared investors and that's why people are not buying the dip and instead they are selling. For me personally, I have a hold rating on this company and I'm nibbling at this company right now. Now, I'm not telling you to do this, but I will explain why I am doing this. The reason why I am buying shares right now and just nibbling at this company is because I am prepared to wait over the next 5-10 to 10 years for this company to catch up to their current accounting ratios. Therefore, I am taking advantage of this short-term volatility in the share price and honestly, this decrease just allows me to buy the company at a cheaper price point. But before you make any investment decision, I would highly encourage you to do your own due diligence and research before you invest into this company or any of the other companies in this news update. Speaking about technology companies, let's talk about Dell, which gave a very upbeat forecast for fiscal 2025. According to the article, Dell Technologies forecasted annual revenue growth and profit that was above Wall Street estimates, which is great news for investors. Another reason why investors are piling into this company is because they are betting on future demand for artificial intelligence servers. And this is one of the reasons why this company's share price has jumped more than 16% during after-hours trading. Due to these marvelous results, the chief operating officer, also known as the COO, has had to say this about the company, and he says, and I quote, Our strong AI-optimized server momentum continues, with orders increasing nearly 40% sequentially and backlog nearly doubling. End quote. So this is great news for investors and the company in general. However, you should know that I personally do not hold this company in my portfolio. But let's continue. Another reason why investors are excited about this company is that the PC market is showing signs of recovery. Their CFO even commented on this by saying the following, he says, we remain bullish on the coming PC refresh cycle and the longer term impact of AI on the PC market, end quote. If you didn't know, the global PC market has returned a growth rate of 3% in quarter 4 of 2023, and it's now poised for an even stronger recovery throughout the year of 2024. This is why Dell specifically is anticipating that the revenues for their fiscal year will come in between $91 billion and $95 billion. And this is very good news because this actually beats analysts' average estimate of $92.07 billion. So again, this is more great news for Dell. But the good news doesn't stop there. Dell also expects that their annual adjusted earnings per share will come in at $7.50 plus or minus 25 cents on the per share basis. And this compares very positively with what analysts are estimating because they believe the company would only bring in $7.15. Therefore, this company is receiving great growth momentum, they have great future forecasts, and they are anticipated to beat on the expectations in regards to their revenue and earnings per share for the entire year. So these are very positive news updates for Dell. Next up, let's talk about Zscaler because they recently had a great earnings report. Zscaler, ticker symbol ZS, is a cybersecurity firm, and recently they reported fiscal second quarter earnings and revenues, which topped Wall Street estimates. According to Wall Street, this company was expected to post earnings per share of 58 cents per share, but instead the company brought in 76 cents per share, which was a huge beat. But the news gets even better. The reason this news gets better is because analysts projected that the company would bring in $507.6 million, but they actually brought in $525 million dollars. So they literally beat this estimate by millions and millions of dollars, which was great news. The news gets even better because their future forecast for fiscal quarter three was also extremely positive. For fiscal quarter three, analysts, professionals, and experts believe that this company would bring in 58 cents per share on an EPS basis. However, the company now guides that they would bring in 64 to 65 cents per share, again beating Wall Street estimates and forecasts. 
Likewise, analysts predict that they will bring in revenues for that quarter of $532 million, while Zscaler now forecasts that they will bring in $535 million, thus adding more good news to this company. Lastly, you should know that Zscaler, which is a cybersecurity firm, also has a relative strength rating of 94 out of the possible score of 99. Next up, we have Advanced Micro Devices, ticker symbol AMD, which has surged in their share price by 7.4%. However, why are they increasing in their share price? Well, honestly, this has something to do with NVIDIA, and here's what I mean. According to the article, NVIDIA may be the largest reason why AMD is surging in their share price right now, and here's why. Normally, if one big company gets positive news in regards to artificial intelligence, then other AI players will also increase in their share price, and here's what happened recently with NVIDIA. Recently, a Tigris financial analyst reiterated his buy rating on NVIDIA, and he raised his one-year price price target on this company from $790 up to $985 per share, and this caused a multitude of AI-related stocks to increase in their respected share prices, which would include AMD. However, there is one problem here. Now, for context, I personally hold AMD and NVIDIA in my personal portfolio, but I want to make investors aware of something. Although AMD has climbed in their share price by around 140% over the past year, the future of this company is pretty ambiguous. AMD is rising in their share price due to artificial artificial intelligence hype, but the company itself has not seen a major change in their sales upticking to correspond with this AI momentum. That means if AMD's sales are not positively reflected in upcoming earnings results, this company could actually start trending downwards and not upwards. However, in my opinion, I think it's only a matter of time before AMD starts to capitalize on this AI market, and I believe that their share price still can go a lot higher, but I would love to hear your thoughts about this company down below in the comments. Lastly, let's round out the video with the biggest stock gainers and losers today, starting off with ticker symbol OKTA. Okta recently increased by 24% in their share price after they beat consensus estimates for their quarter 4 earnings report. For context, this is a cybersecurity company very similar to Zscaler, however this company was actually breached a few months ago, and this is why their share price has actually been trending downwards, but recently it seems that they have caused a reversal in their share price. According to the article, the cybersecurity firm highlighted record non-GAAP profitability and cash flow for quarter four. The article goes on to say, the company's revenue increased 19% year over year to 605 million, driven by a 20% rise in subscription revenue, end quote. So again, this is very good news for this company. In my personal opinion, I would rather invest into a cybersecurity firm which did not have a gigantic breach in it. However, that's just my general thought, but now let's move over to Duolingo, ticker symbol D-U-O-L. This company operates a language learning platform, and they're also trying to get involved with grammar and math as well, and recently, their stock price jumped by 21% after exceeding expectations in their quarter four results. The reason for all of this momentum is because the company reported a 51% year-over-year growth in total bookings, with subscription bookings and paid subscribers up 57%. So honestly, this is exactly what we would want to see from this company, so it's no wonder why their share price is increasing right now. Next up, let's talk about C3AI, ticker symbol AI, and their shares recently jumped by 23% due to stronger-than-expected quarter three results and future guidance. According to the article, the company is capitalizing on the generative artificial intelligence opportunity and aggressively investing to expand its global market share. However, the news gets even better, because listen to this. Quote, Wedbush securities analyst Daniel Ives boosted his price target to $40 from $35. C3 AI now expects full-year 2024 revenue between $306 million and $310 million, up from a prior forecast of $295 million to $320 million and a consensus of $305.53 million. Therefore, this is great news for this company, so it's no wonder why their shares are surging by 23% right now. But now let's move on to the biggest stock losers that you need to know about. Earlier, we mentioned Snowflake, ticker symbol SNOW, in regards to their share price falling by 23%. But here are two other things that you need to know about this company in regards to why their share price is falling. The company not only forecasted a significant slowdown for their upcoming revenues, but they also announced that they are shaking up their management team. And like I said before, I'm actually using this negative news as a buying opportunity, but always make sure to do your own research. Next up, we have HP, ticker symbol HPQ, which we touched on yesterday. Essentially, the company's quarter one revenue announcement fell short of analysts' expectations and 
investors did not want to hear that, so that's why the company is dropping in their share price. And then lastly, we have ticker symbol CC. For me personally, I don't invest into CC stock right now, and recently their shares fell by more than 40%. The reason for this is because investors are scared for this company, and here's why. A statement was released two weeks ago about possible vulnerabilities in their financial reporting. This report was so incriminating that the CEO and CFO will be placed on administrative leave. So this is really not good news for this company. And if this is found out to be true, this could be catastrophic for not only the share price, but also the company itself. So with that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Comment your thoughts down below about any or all of these stories. And with that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.